Hello everyone. This is a lesson in algebra, GCSE, higher mathematics. And let's see what topics we are going to cover during this lesson. The first exercise are indices. This is the exercise one. The next exercise is solving equations, especially when the x is a power. Simplifying algebraic fractions. Solving equations by comparing coefficients on both sides. Exercise 4. Solving questions with sequences, arithmetic sequence, finding the terms in this sequence and finds expressions for the sum of the nth terms. This is the exercise 5. And also we are going to see the iterative formula that generates terms of like a sequence that lead towards the solution of a function. and completing the iteration sequences, finding the x1, x2, and x3. Also, we are going to cover in graphical inequalities by sketching the graph of straight lines and find the region that all, all the inequalities satisfy. And also, we are going to see functions how to find the inverse function, a composite function, and create equations. And finally, we are going to see multiplication of brackets, more than two, multiply three brackets. And these are the topics we are going to see on during this lesson. And let's start from the first. The first one is indices. Simplifying the expression m to the power of 4 to the power of negative 2. In this case, we multiply the powers according to the rule. And the answer is m to the power of 4 times negative 2. It will be negative 8. I follow the rule a to the power of b to another power of c. Simplify it as a to the power of b times the c. And the second is a fraction, 8p to the power of 3 over, we can simplify the numbers separately by dividing by 2, and this gives you 4 over 5, and the powers go with a rule, subtracting the indices, so the p is a power of negative 2. For the indices of fractions and powers, I use the rule, subtracting the indices. So the answer is 4 over 5 p to the power of negative 2. Let's go to number 2. Here we need to solve equations. The first one is to find the value of x that satisfy this equation. First thing to do is to divide both sides by 5 to the power of 6. Or another way to do this is to write the 625 as a power of 5 by using the factor 3. You divide by 5 until you find all the fives. This is five square. So 625 is five to the power of four. So five to the power of six times Using the indices rules, the left hand side is 5 
and the right hand side is 5 to the power of 4. Because this is an equation, the powers have to be equal. So the value of x have to be negative 2. This is for the a. For the b, we have the equation. We divide here both sides by 3. And then 64. And the cubic root of 64 is 4. So the y is 4. So I take the cubic root of 64 and the answer is 4. And let's go to the number 3. Algebraic fractions, simplifying algebraic fractions, we need to make sure they have same denominators. So the lowest common multiple between 4 and 5 is the 20. So we need to, we need to make both fractions denominator 20 by multiplying the first fraction by 5. I multiply the first fraction by 5 and the second fraction by 4. And the common denominator is 20. times the brackets, 5x plus 4x give you 9x, 5 times 3 is 15 plus 8, 15 plus 8 give you 23 over 20. And this is the final answer, 9x plus 23 over 20. And let's see this equation. Here we have an equation x plus 4 times x minus 2 plus a plus bx equal x squared plus 5x minus 10. And what I want to find is the values of the a and the b. I can find the values of the a and b after multiplying the brackets and simplifying the left hand side. So if I times these two brackets, I have a quadratic x squared plus 2x minus 8 plus a plus bx is equal to the x squared plus 5x minus 10. In order to solve this equation, we need to factorize the 2x terms to make it to combine both of them in one coefficient. So I need to factorize the 2x terms, these two, and the constant separately. We keep it separately. So the left hand side is x squared plus bracket 2 plus b times the x. And the constant is a minus 8. And now this is equal to x squared plus 5x minus 10. This is an equation. And since it is an equation, the coefficients must be the same because I have exactly the same quadratics in both of the equations. So the coefficients in front of the x squared have to be the same, the x have to be the same, and the constant have to be the same. This is an equation. So the 2 plus b must be equal to 5. And also the a minus 8 must be equal to negative 10, and this gives you the equation to solve and find the b. The b is 3, and the a is negative 2. And these are the solutions of the above equation. We found the values of the a and the b. So we found the solutions by comparing coefficients on both sides. Number 5. This is an arithmetic sequence, 3n plus 5. And we need to check whether 259 is a term of this sequence. One effective way to do is to make an equation using the term, the nth term, and see if I can find a value of the n that includes this number. 
solving this equation for n, the 3n is equal to 254 and since the this is not divisible by 3 not divisible by 3 the 254 is not divisible by 3 there is no value of n a position that give you this value 259 the n is the position of the number on this sequence so it is no this number is not in the sequence find an expression for the sum of the nth term and the nth n plus one term so i need to find the nth term is the three n plus five and the n plus 1, I replace the n with the n plus 1, and I can find the general format. This is 3n plus 3 plus 5 give you plus 8. So this is the nth term, this is the n plus 1 term in the simplest form. Okay, this is the nth term, and this is the n plus 1 term. These are two consecutive numbers in the sequence. Consecutive numbers means they are next to each other in the number line. The sum of two consecutive terms in this sequence is 85. Find the smaller of these two terms. And since I found, actually this is the two consecutive terms, but the sum, I need to add them actually. To find the sum, I need to add both of them. 3n plus 5 plus the n plus 1 plus 3n plus 8 and this gives you an expression for the sum so 6 uh, expression means the general term of the sum the general formula for the sum 3n plus 3n is 6n plus 8 plus 5 13 so this is 6n plus 13 and because I'm going to use now this sum rule uh, on this part, the sum of two consecutive terms in this sequence is 85. So I'm going to use this expression, 6n plus 13, because this is an expression for the sum of the n and the n plus 1, which I can use here and find what is the value of n where two consecutive numbers have a sum of 85. So 6n plus 13 is equal to 85. Solving this equation, I can find the nth, the value of the term. Seventy-two. So the nth value is twelve, the twelfth number. So the n is the 12 and the next one is the 13. So the sum of the 12th n the thir plus the 13th number of the sequence give you the value of 85. If you add these two numbers, give you the, the 85. The smaller one is the n equals 12. And to find this, I need to use the nth term. The enter is 3n plus 5. 3 times n plus 5, which means 3 times 12 plus 5. This is 41. This is the 41 term. First, 41st term. 41. And the 13th, yes, is 3 times 13 plus 5. And let's go to the iteration formula. The iteration formula is a formula that has been prepared in such a way so to find the terms that lead to a solution of a complex equation. 
And this is a formula we use when we cannot solve them in the proper way and find solutions. So we create an iterative formula and the terms of this formula go to the solution of that equation. So the formula is the x n plus 1 is equal to the 4 plus I have a starting value of 1, which means I need to put the starting value into this formula and find the next value. So the x1, it will be the square root of 4 plus 2 over x0. The x0 is 1, is the starting value. And this gives you the x1 term. So this is the 4 plus 2 is the square root of 6. As in decimal, square root of 6 is... 2.45 You may write it in three decimal places 2.449 Yes, you may write also the all the decimals if you want or you round the numbers, no problem. The x2, I can use the same formula with the x1 to find it. So it's 2 over, the x1 must be denominator, 2 over 2.4494, and this formula gives me the next term, which is 2.1946. And the x, the third one, is the 4 plus 2 over 2.1. And this gives you a value of 2.21. These are the first three terms of that interrogative formula. And this is, what does the, this mean? This an estimate, these terms are estimates of the solution of that complex equation. Okay, these are estimates of a solution of a, an, a complex or an equation that we cannot solve in a proper way. We create these formulas so we can find the solution. Solutions are the values of x that satisfy the equation. And let's go to this graphical inequalities. The first step here is to draw the graph of the lines. Here I have three inequalities, x plus y less than 5, x greater than minus 2, and the y greater than 1. And I want to find the region that are satisfied, is satisfied by all of these inequalities and is defined by these inequalities. So I need to find the graph x plus y equal 5, the x equal negative 2, and the y equal 1. I need to plot the graphs, and to plot the graph, to draw the graphs, I need to know two points on that particular, on this specific graph. For example, the x plus y equals 5, I need to find two points when the x is 0, the y is 5. So 0, 0,5 is one point, another point is the, another point here will be the 5,0. This is enough, 0, 0,5 and 5, 0, I plot these points. And I connect with a line. Now, let's move the line on the pass. Yeah, that's perfect. Now, let's draw the line x equals negative 2. This is a vertical line at negative 2. That's perfect. 
and also y equals 1. This is a horizontal line at 1. That's perfect. Now what I'm going to do is to find what is the region that satisfies all of these three inequalities. One way to do this is to choose a testing point. You, ch you need to choose a testing point anywhere on the graph paper. In my case, I may choose the origin. I can choose the origin or I can also choose, yeah, I can choose the origin, for example. This is one way. Let's check the origin as a testing point. The method works. I'm, go I'm going to get each of these inequalities and use the coordinates 0 and 0, 0 for x and 0 for y. A straight line divides the page in two parts. One part includes the testing point and the other part does not include the testing point. Always a straight line divides the page in two parts. One side includes the testing point and the other part does not include the testing point. So if the point satisfies that inequality, the region I want to find has to be in that, in the part of a line that includes the testing point. If it does not satisfy the inequality, the point, the region that I want to color have to be to the opposite part of the line because a line divides the graph, the page, in two parts only, only two parts. If it's not the one part, it will be the other one. And as you can see, where is the testing point is the origin. It is here. I'm going to get the first inequality, which is represented by the blue line. So I'm going to check the first inequality, x plus y less than 5. I'm going to use the coordinates x for 0 for x and 0 for y onto this inequality. And let's see if it is true. 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. And the 0 is less than 5. The inequality is true, okay? Which means that the region I want to color is to the same part as the testing point. So remember, this inequality is the blue line, so it has to be to the left, to the left of the blue line. And I'm going to show the region using, yes, you may show using colors or any other symbol, no problem at all, okay, to the left. The right region must be to the left because I need to find the region that satisfies all of them. Now I'm going to check now the second inequality, which is x greater than minus 2. This is very easy to check because we check only one coordinate, the 0. The 0 is greater than minus 2, which is correct. Okay, the x greater than minus 2. 0 is greater than minus 2. This is correct, which means the right region must be the x equals negative 2 is the green line, is the vertical line, and the right region must be to the same side as the testing point. So it has to be to the right. And I'm going to show all the right region with arrows. So you have to be to the right of the to the right of the green line, to the left of the blue, and let's check the other inequality that is represented by the red line. 
this is y greater than 1. Now the origin, now 0, is greater than 1. This is wrong. This is wrong. Since the 0 is not greater than 1, the right region must be to the opposite side of the, of the line. So it has to be above. So I'm looking for all the, the region above the line. And now combining all these three regions together, you see that you have a triangle that you have on, in the middle part. And you may color this right region with any color because this region satisfy all of the three inequalities. Any point on this tri inside this triangle satisfy all of the three inequalities. And to help me find this region, I use a testing point. The rule is that if the point satisfies the inequality, the region must be in the same part, in the same side as the testing point. A straight line divides the page in two parts only. Cannot divide more than two parts, a straight line, so it's very easy to find the right region. Don't get confused at all. And now the solution is colored with this orange, with an orange color. And this is the region that you need to specify and write on the page. Now this is the answer for this exercise. Okay, and now we go to the functions. Here we have a function f and the function g. And the exercise asks you to show the gf bracket 2 is equal to 22. So this means that I need to find the function gf and use the value x equals 2 and check. So I need to find what is the function gf. The function gf, I put the f into the function g. And I put the whole function of the f into the input of the g. Which means I start with the g and I put into the x of g the f. So it have to be 3 times 3 plus 2x plus 1. This is the g f. I put the f into the input of g. I do multiplications. I have 9 plus 6x plus 1 give you 6x plus 10. And now the gf2 is, I put 2 here, 6 times 2 plus 10 is 22. And I'm going to find the inverse of the function f. The function f is y equals 3 plus 2x. To find the inverse, I make x the subject. The first thing to do is to make x the subject. And then I just Replace the x with the inverse and the y with the x. And the inverse is the x minus 3 over 2. All I did, I replaced the x with the inverse function and the y with the x, with the input. So the inverse is the x minus 3 over 2. First, I made x the subject of the equation. And this is for the exercise of functions. And this is the last exercise we are going to do, is to multiply three brackets. The method of multiplying three brackets is to do the first two brackets first. And once we have finished with this, we do also the last one. So first we multiply these two brackets. 4x times 2x give you 8x squared. 4x times 1 give you 4x. Minus 1 times 2x give you minus 2x. And minus 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. It's a good idea to simplify before starting the other multiplication. So I have 8x squared plus 2x minus 1. This is the multiplication of the first two brackets. And I go and multiply the last one. So it's 3 and 2. I have 
8x squared times 3x give you 24x cubed. 8x squared times 2 is 16x squared. 2x times 3x give you 6x squared. Two x times two is four x minus three x minus two. Like terms twenty four x cubed twenty two x squared plus one x minus two. And this is the final answer of these brackets. This is the solution of this exercise as well. And we came to the end of the lesson. If you enjoy the lesson and you want to subscribe, please do so so you can see more lessons like this. And like the video if you did enjoy the video. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Thank you for watching. Bye.